A very good good morning to one and all present here. I welcome uh, Dr. Vijay Kumar Krishna Swami, sir, professor from uh, Department of Electrical Engineering, Indian Institute of Information Technology Design and Manufacturing. On behalf of our management, our college, and on my own behalf, I welcome you, sir, for accepting our invitation and uh, delivering the session on the title uh, Distributed Generation System in Wind Energy Conversion System. Uh, thank you once again, sir, for acceptance of our invitation. I'll let me read about the brief profile of sir. Sir has completed a BE, triple E in CIT Coimbatore in the year 2002 to 2006. ME, MTech Power System from NIT Trichy, 2009. Uh, PhD in Electrical Engineering, NIT Trichy for the year 2012. His uh, area of uh, interest, uh, electrical uh, electronics engineering, power electronics, embedded system, instrumentation and control, research uh, interest in power electronics, Home energy management system, smart grid, Internet of Things, application of machine learning and artificial intelligence to energy system, embedded controllers, industrial electronics, renewable energy systems. He has got so many awards and recognitions. Visiting professor for research given by University of Saskatchewan, Canada for the year 2017. Uh, he has got IEA Young Engineer Award for the excellence in the field of electrical engineering. For the year 2017, Shastri Indo Canadian Fellow for research uh, collaboration given by Shastri Indo Canadian Institute in the year that has uh, CIDA and MHRD. Year 2017, visiting researcher, research given by Alexander University, uh, Germany, Young Faculty Fellowship Award, uh, Government of India 2016, Young Scientist Award. For startup research grant given by Sub DST in the year 2015, uh, Power System Award PPSA 2014 for his uh, doctoral thesis and listed top 10 among all IITs and NITs uh, in the year 2014. Selected for Canadian Commonwealth Research Fellowship in University of uh, uh, Canada uh, for the year 2013. Postdoctoral Fellowship from Nanyang Technological, Technological University, Singapore uh, for the year 2012. MHRD Fellowship for PhD uh, from uh, Ministry of Human Resource Development in the year 2009. Get a scholarship for MTech course, uh, MHRD in the year uh, 2007. Work experience, uh, uh, Assistant Professor in Electrical Engineering. Malavia National Institute of Technology, Jaipur, visiting professor in the University in Canada, 2017, adjunct assistant professor in National Center for Disaster Management and Medication at Malavia NIT, Jaipur for the year 2014-16. Research, research fellow in NIT Trichy, postdoctoral research fellow in Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. Professional membership, IEEE, IET, IAENG, IESC, SIT, IE, ISTE. And he has served uh, as a professional service reviewer for SERP DST project proposal, reviewer for IEEE, IET, LCR, Springer, journals and conferences. And uh, he has uh, done so many administrative work in the college in journal publication, more than uh, 25 and uh, journals and uh, 25 conferences. I welcome you, Professor, once again for our STTP. I request you to hand over the session, sir. Kindly take the session, sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thanks for uh, introduction and inviting me to deliver the lecture in this uh, uh, workshop. Uh, today, and good morning to all the participants. It's my great pleasure to meet you all in this uh, uh, environment. I hope uh, everyone is safe in this uh, pandemic situation. Uh, and uh, uh, it's my pleasure to share my knowledge in this uh, workshop on the topic of 
for electronic controllers designed for uh, wind energy conversion system so when we talk about uh, distributed generation so there are various uh, distributed generations in uh, uh, in our uh, uh, we can say it's a microgrid or in our uh, network so one among that uh, various uh, uh, distributed generation sources the wind is uh, dominant one so as of today uh, among all the distributed generation sources wind is contributing uh, uh, wind is a dominating one we can say it's uh, uh, generating uh, more power as compared to uh, other uh, distributed generation sources so what's the distribution uh, distributed generation first we can discuss about the distributed generation then we move to the wind energy conversion system so uh, do you have any idea about that distributed generation why we call uh, different sources as uh, distributed generation sources anyone having any idea about it yes uh, i mean uh, if it's wrong there is no issue so just we can we can have the discussion so that would be better instead of having the one way communication better we can have the discussion right so just try can uh, uh, you, you can uh, uh, tell me your views then we can uh, discuss it no issue so any idea about uh, distributed generation yes yeah in a uh, someone type as to reduce the loss the answer sir kind of to reduce the losses so how you are saying to reduce the losses by using the distributed generation i think mr uh, parameswar has answered so do you uh, just you can justify your uh, statement why we are saying it's a redu uh, reduction of losses yeah of course it's a, uh, uh, one of the reason to have the distributed generation sources in our grid yeah so uh, distributed generation sources normally uh, wind photovoltaic uh, biomass biogas and other renewable energy sources are called uh, distributed generation sources in our grid so uh, why we are calling the distributed gen uh, distributed generation sources means yeah, yeah uh, of course we are generating the electricity from these sources uh, and uh this distributed generation sources we are connecting this generation sources in a distribution network right so if you take the wind or photovoltaic even just we have seen the rooftop pvs this rooftop pvs or wind energy conversion system will connect to the distribution network so instead of having the uh, uh, generating station just we are connecting these sources to the distributed network so that's what we call it as a distribution uh, uh, distributed generation sources uh, and another thing why we are connecting to this uh, 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 distributed generation sources in the distribution network means so we are not having the bulk power generation so it's uh, we can say it's in a, uh, a 10 kilowatt 100 kilowatt even uh, even a 500 watt or 1 kilowatt of the uh, plant you can able to connect to the distribution uh, network and another thing it's a distributed in a network it's not in a single i mean you are not connecting um, all the sources in a single point just you are connecting in the uh, multiple point multiple points in the uh, distributed network so that's what we call these sources as a distributed generation sources even just uh, we are not connecting at the one point just it's a uh, distributed in the network so that's what it's a uh, uh, distributed generation okay so now just we are having the wind photovoltaic uh, uh, sources so where we are connecting we are connecting to the uh, distributed network exactly so here is it possible to connect the wind turbine directly to the network or uh, is it possible to connect your photovoltaic uh, panels directly to the network say yes or no is it possible to connect uh, all uh, uh, resources no right why why it's uh, not possible directly connect to that we are 
so what what is the interface between the uh, these panels and your uh, uh, grid just we are having the power electronic converters am i right just you are uh, with the help of the power electronic converter you are connecting these resources to the network so whenever we are talking about the power electronic converters so always it's so it injects the harmonics to the network right so whenever if, even if you are having the single switch on the network uh, for example in our home just we are having the uh, fan control the fan control having the triac so that triac itself can generate a lot of harmonics to the network so it will pollute the network so here in this course that's what just we are uh, 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 the theme of the course is uh, power quality mitigation right so here uh, 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 what i'm doing is uh, maybe uh, for approaching that uh, uh, problems are different so how i approach means uh, instead of uh, injecting the harmonics so how we are injecting the harmonics means by connecting the power electronic converters to the network so by connecting the power electronic converters into the network it will pollute the network then you can go with some kind of uh, active filters or you can go with the statcoms to uh, mitigate this power quality issues even there are a lot of uh, uh, fax devices uh, these fax devices can useful for uh, mitigating the power quality issues in the network right so here uh, today's topic i'm not going to talk about this uh, 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 fax devices or any kind of uh, syntactic filters or statcom to mitigate this uh, uh, harmonics so here i am going to talk about how we can reduce the harmonics i mean inject, injecting the harmonics to the network so in the uh, power electronic converters just we can do some modification i mean even uh, we are not doing much uh, uh, modification on the topology uh in the just we are modifying the topology of the wind energy converter system so instead of uh, uh, connecting slide not changing i, I haven't uh, uh, gone through the slide as of now just i'm giving the overview of the slide so uh, the uh, slides are visible for you is slides are visible or not yes okay then I, I haven't touched on the slide. Just I'm giving a uh, uh, just overview of that topic. Then I can go into that topic. That's what I'm discussing here. Uh, so uh, here, instead of uh, connecting the power electronic converters, just we are doing some modification on the system component level so that we can uh, 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 try to reduce the harmonics uh, that will be uh, injected into the grid. So that's what uh, today we are going to discuss about some power electronic controllers for uh, wind energy conversion system. Uh, here, one more thing: uh, uh, when we talk about this uh, uh, power electronic converters, whether we are using for uh, uh, power quality issues or we are using for reactive power compensation or reducing the uh, uh, harmonic currents in the system, only the change is in the control strategy even the converters are saying only just we are changing the control strategy right so here once you know the basics of uh, 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 power electronic converters then it will be easy for you to understand the any concepts like statcom or syntactic filter or you can say it's a wind energy conversion system or solar photovoltaic systems uh, uh, here uh, first uh, uh, in this uh, today's topic uh, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, wind energy conversion system, uh, power electronic controllers for wind energy conversion system. So first we will touch upon the basics of uh, wind, then uh, what are the generators uh, we can uh, uh, choose for this uh, wind turbines, and what are the power electronic converters it's available, and uh, what is the importance of the, uh, uh, what is the importance of the power converters in this wind energy conversion system. So these are the uh, 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 topics we are going to cover in this uh, today session. So energy transformation. So just I will touch some basics why we are uh, focusing much on that renewable energy system. Then I can uh, move to the wind energy conversion system. So when we talk about the energy, even uh, uh, we can say even the countries 
uh, any country's development is depending upon that uh, uh, their gdp even uh, the gdp is depending upon the uh, power demand of that country so how much power demand is increasing in every year so that shows the development of the country so even if you take uh, any country's uh, 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 power demand electrical power demand that can uh, tell you the growth of that country or growth of that uh, 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 any state or nation right so the here uh, that's what uh, even the power demand is keep on increasing even they are come up with some kind of uh, uh, transformations that they are expecting on 2050 so in a 2050 uh, they are expecting this uh, uh, this uh, these points to focus on it the main objective in the energy transformation is uh, to reduce the uh, uh, carbon emissions. So just we are uh, uh, emitting a lot of uh, uh, gases from the conventional power plants like uh, thermal power plants. So that they are uh, uh, focusing to reduce by 70%. So that's what's the major uh, objective of this energy transformation. And another thing, by having this uh, renewable energy sources, by having this renewable energy sources, you can able to reduce the electricity cost. So that means just you are, uh, try to reduce the energy cost. So how we can reduce the energy cost means nowadays, just we are depending upon the uh, uh, power utilities. The power utilities, they are uh, supplying the power to the consumers. And here, the power power will, uh, I mean, if you are saying it's a conventional power plants, these conventional power plants, depending upon the fossil fuels, like uh, you can consider the coal, oil. So this coal and oil are importing from the other nations. So once the crude oil prices changes, even then uh, uh, the cost of, uh, uh, even the generation cost will increase. So that generation cost again uh, uh, will uh, shift into the consumers uh, uh, cost so that uh, that will change uh, that will decide the tariff uh, electricity tariff so again that cost will come to us the, as a consumers so once if you are having that renewable energy sources so just we are we need not to depending upon any kind of uh, imported oil or coal so the price can be fixed by our local government so uh, obviously the energy cost will reduce so even uh, do you have any idea what is the uh, 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 tariff? That means uh, some bit happened for renewable energy sources like wind and photovoltaic. So even uh, the companies are ready to give a power to the government uh, for the three rupees, even a 2.84 or 2.72 something. Uh, 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 that's the lowest bid in India. Even uh, 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 in that uh, three rupees, they are supplying the power to the uh, consume uh, sorry utilities and util I mean they, the the uh, uh, discom distributed uh, uh, companies they will purchase and they will distribute to the consumers. So obviously, once you are having this uh, uh, distributed generation sources, or you can say it's a renewable uh, power generation sources, obviously you can able to reduce the energy cost. The next one is uh, economic gain. Yeah, of course, uh, if you are spending, uh, the government is spending. Uh, uh, one rupee, one rupee, then they can able to get back three to seven rupees as a payoff for the each rupee spent. And here, the next one is improved energy security. Yeah, whenever we are talking about the security, uh, just we are uh, uh, depending upon some developed countries for importing the coal, coal and oil. So once they stop. Think of it. So all our uh, uh, power generating stations will uh, will be in the trouble. So they they won't get the resources like coal and uh, uh, oil for uh, for their plants. So what will happen? You won't get uh, you won't get a uh, electricity all the times. So this will uh, raise the energy security issues, right? So once if you are having that renewable energy sources, then uh, we can have the uh, higher energy security. So uh, as of as on today, just we are uh, uh, depending on 64 percent of the demand from the fossil fuels. So uh, then, uh, when we when we come into that uh, uh, energy access, so energy access means uh, in India, uh, if you are considering almost uh, uh, four to five percent of the villages are not connected with the electric electrical grid. Think of it: if you are not having the electrical grid. 
then the development of that location is uh, 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 lagging behind the uh, other part of the country. So for, uh, we can say, uh, uh, for uh, uh, development of that particular locations, we can say it's uh, uh, rural locations, then just to give the uh, electrical uh, uh, network, you have to connect that places to the uh, electrical network. But is it possible? Sometimes uh, that, far, uh, that location may be uh, in the hill station, then just we have to spend a lot of money for uh, uh, infrastructure, line uh, transmission line or distribution line infrastructures. So for that, uh, during I mean for that areas, just the best solution is renewable energy uh, generation. So that's what uh, 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 by having this photovoltaic bio biomass biogas or uh, uh, wind energy conversion system, you can able to supply the rural areas where it's uh, uh, not connected to the great uh, of course by having this uh, we can have some socio-economic uh, perspective uh, by having the energy transformation so once you are uh, once you are creating this uh, sources then obviously you can able to cre create the lot of uh, job opportunities for the people so uh, socio-economic point of view also it will be good so this is a, a renewable energy estimation by 2050. So uh, th this is a worldwide, uh, this is a worldwide demand. So if you look at it in 2016, almost we are uh, having the 25,000 uh, uh, 25, uh, terawatt hour per year. So that uh, going to increase in 2050, 2050 uh, it's uh, around 55,000 terawatt hour uh, uh, per year. So in that, if you look at that, uh, in, in nowadays the renewable uh, 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 renewables are contributed less, but in 2050 they are expecting that uh, the renewables will contribute more than 50 percent in the generation mix. So that's what uh, uh, they are expecting it. Uh, in, in that, if you, in that renewables itself, we can have we can uh, you know uh, fabricate. Then, uh, if you look at it uh, in uh, 2050, in 2050, almost uh, uh, we can say uh, one by third of the power is generated from the wind energy conversion system. So, at the same time, more than the wind, the photovoltaic going to photovoltaic uh, power generation going to contribute more than the wind energy conversion system. So, uh, here the wind will contribute around uh, 6,000 uh, gigawatt. Here, the photovoltaic uh, contribute around uh, 8,000 watt or gigawatt of the power in the generation mix. So uh, uh, we can say in 2050, then uh, uh, more than 50% uh, uh, of the power will be generated from the renewable energy sources. So among this uh, uh, variable renewable energy sources, wind and photovoltaic uh, dominate in this uh, uh, generation. So here, uh, uh, just we are going to concentrate on the wind energy conversion system. So from the beginning, if you look at it, so uh, in, uh, uh, in 1982, uh, we had the first uh, wind turbine with a capacity of uh, uh, 22 kilowatt. So is even as a single turbine able to generate 22 uh, kilowatt of the power in 1982. And in 2001, if you look at it, the single wind turbine capacity increases to one megawatt range. So uh, for reaching the one megawatt of the single turbine, it takes 20 years uh, to develop. So uh, uh, in 2008, if you look at it, uh, the total uh, power generation capacity of uh, wind power is 100 gigawatt. In 2008, just we have reached the uh, uh, power capacity of 100 gigawatt from the wind. So within that decade, even if you look at the 2018, so just we are generating the power from the wind is 564 gigawatt. So uh, almost uh, we can say 600, giga 600 gigawatt of the power is generated from the wind alone in the worldwide. So and even uh, if you look at the development in 2019 recently we are having the uh, single turbine capacity of 10 megawatt 10 megawatt single turbine capacity we are having 
uh, uh, we are having commercially. So that's a development that happened uh, uh, in the wind industry. Okay, uh, 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 this is a, a roadmap uh, for uh, uh, wind energy conversion system, and uh, this will give some of the uh, uh, statistical data. So if you look at that uh, wind power in the total generation mix, uh, I mean, again, consider the 2018 as a, a current period, almost we are getting the 6% of the power is generated from the wind power. So in 2050, they are planning to increase one by third of the power generation from the wind. So here in a wind energy conversion system, you are having uh, two types. One is onshore and offshore wind turbines. So in onshore wind turbines, I mean onshore means uh, uh, just we can look at the. Uh, I mean you may look at the turbines at uh, 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 on our areas like uh, uh, in Tamil Nadu. You can able to find in that uh, uh, places Coimbatore and uh, Nagaroil areas. There are a lot of wind turbines. So these are onshore wind turbines. So if you are having the uh, 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 seashore. If you are having the wind turbines on the seashore or on the on the sea, so that will be called as a offshore wind turbines. But in India, just offshore wind turbines are very less as compared to onshore wind turbines because just we are having the uh, huge uh, uh, amount of lands. So that's what people have preferred to go with onshore wind turbines. But nowadays, if you look at that uh, land cost, it uh, uh, increased multiple times as compared to the uh, uh case of 2000 2000s so that's what nowadays people are thinking about the uh, offshore wind turbines so even uh, uh as of now the currently if you are looking at uh, just we are having the 5000 odd uh, uh, gigawatt of the power is generated from the onshore wind turbines as co as compared to the offshore wind turbines offshore wind turbines contribute only 23 gigawatt of the uh, uh, uh power so even uh, if you look at the deployment of the uh, new turbines, it's every year, it's keep on increasing. So that's what just I want to show it here. Uh, even uh, every year, they are increasing the capacity. Uh, when we come into that uh, uh, India, so in India, uh, for renewable energy market, if you look at it, as of 2019, we are having 87 gigawatt of the power from the renewable energy. It's not only from wind, it's a mixture of uh, other resources also. So almost we are having 87 gigawatt of the power is generated from the renewable energy sources. So that it's going to increase to 175 gigawatt of the power by 2022. So even uh, uh, in India, just we are having the separate ministry for renewable energy there is a uh, Ministry of New Renewable Energies, uh, 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 MNRE, Ministry of New Renewable Energy. So just they will provide the guidelines and uh, policies. Uh, we, we can say it's, uh, 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 they, are uh, they are developing the regulations also. So uh, almost uh, they are, uh, uh, they are uh, for, uh, forecasting that by 2022 they can able to achieve 175 gigawatt of the power generation from the renewable energy sources so when we come to the sector composition uh, installed capacity that means uh, as of uh, uh, today the installed capacity if you look at it uh, uh, from the wind they are able to generate the 37.67 gigawatt and from the photovoltaic and uh, uh, solar uh, almost they are having the 34 gigawatt. So even uh, today's uh, uh, point of view, the wind is contributing more than the any other renewable energy sources. So that's what I want to claim here. Even for next five, if you consider the next five years, uh, the, I mean this uh, solar photovoltaic will increase uh, multiple times as compared to wind. So what's the reason? Do you have any reason why we are focusing much on uh, photovoltaic system nowadays as compared to other renewable energy sources? Any idea? Any idea why we are uh, focusing much on that uh, uh, 
photovoltaic systems. Sir, India is blessed with uh, solar energy, sir. We are having a lot yeah, of course. solar Just we are having a lot of uh, resources, right? Yeah. Yes, One is that. And? I think technology uh, is maturing in the photovoltaic uh, uh, area, no. sir. Uh, technology wise if you are speaking uh, if you are speaking uh, in a wind just we are uh, having a lot of uh, advanced technology we can say the wind is uh, mature, wind is having the mature technology so there is a lot of scope in uh, material what is being used for as a solar cell yeah uh, of it? course mm -hmm. of course so now is uh, the price of this uh, uh, silicon and all is coming down so that's what uh, huge scope even even uh, if you are talking about the wind turbine also just we are uh, having a lot of materials for uh, rotor blades and uh, tower even for uh, generate i mean generator side they are working on it uh yeah i'll come to the point so as compared to the uh, uh, wind energy convent system the solar solar photovoltaic having the uh, stationary parts right if you consider the wind energy convent system it's a rotational part just we are having the generator uh, wind turbine under but when we uh, when we discuss about the photovoltaic system just we are having the stationary uh, uh, parts you can say it's a panels it's a stationary so if you are having the rotational parts always having the uh, stability issues so only you can able to generate the power more than uh, we can say it's a more than 10 kilowatt or 5 kilowatt but with the photovoltaic, you can able to uh, uh, utilize that photovoltaic panels for milliwatt level, even in your uh, uh, gadgets or in your, uh, uh, you know, uh, home appliances, you can embed it, right? So uh, even a watch, we can have, we may have the panels, even calculators, we can able to find the uh, uh, photovoltaic panels, right? So even you can able to generate the power from milliwatt to megawatt, but in a wind, you can at least you can have the kilowatt range so that's the reason uh, they are focusing much uh, uh, potential in the photovoltaic system as compared to the wind so that's what uh, nowadays they are uh, uh, investing uh, so much in the photovoltaic system so when we come into the biopower and the small hydro it's almost uh, giving a, a, a 10 odd gigawatt of the power to the uh, renewable power generation so even it's a key trends if you look at it in every year it's keep on uh, increasing uh, at the same time the government's also nowadays focusing much on uh, uh, renewable and systems so in that uh, there are a lot of initiatives you can say it's uh, wind pv hybrid systems solar parks even adani and all they are having 500 uh, odd uh, uh, megawatt of the uh, plants in the uh, country uh, they are having like a solar power plants more than 500 megawatt of the power is generating from the single plant uh, at the same time the government also it's uh, 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 motivate the people uh, to go to go ahead with the rooftop photo uh, root of photovoltaic systems right so these are the uh, initiatives with the government so when we come into the uh, uh, wind energy conversion system just we are having the wind turbines so there are two types of wind turbines here. One is uh, vertical axis wind turbine and uh, horizontal axis wind turbine. So earlier days, they have come up with a vertical axis wind turbine. So even they are having the uh, higher starting torque, but uh, in the mechanical stability point of view, these vertical axis wind turbines are not suitable for the power generation. So that's what they have moved to the horizontal axis wind turbine. So in a horizontal axis wind turbine, you're, you're having the rotor on the tower so depending upon the uh, rotor area so we'll say is the rotor area is depending upon the length of the blade uh, are you able to see uh, see my cursor because just i put in the pdf as a presenter so uh, i i could not able to use the pointer here so my uh, cursor is visible to you yes no 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 oh cursor is not visible yeah, yeah, it's visible, sir, right now. Okay, it's visible. And now just I'm moving. So uh, you can able to see my uh, cursor, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, then, sure, sure. 
sorry so, uh, everything is visible sir your voice is also clear okay okay ma'am okay oh, so because you. now just try using a uh, this pdf first time because in my laptop uh, i do not have that uh, uh, microsoft powerpoint so that's what just uh, I, i mean if i'm using a microsoft powerpoint i can use a, a, a pointer that's that but here i'm using cursor so that's what i want to uh, confirm it okay so here the rotor area depending upon the length of the blade so just we can say if you are increasing the length of the blade the area rotor area also will increase so once the rotor area increases the power generation or you can say the energy energy captured by the wind turbine also will increase so uh, uh, normally come uh, just we can say commercially this horizontal axis wind turbines are used for uh, power generation so these are the uh, different uh, uh, components uh, which is available in the horizontal axis wind turbine uh, just so i can start from the rotor so uh, if you look at this area so this area uh, uh, consists of rotor blades so rotor blades this rotor blades is connected with the hub right connected with the hub so if you look at that uh, 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 rotors that means the blades so this blades are not flat so the blade if you look at the blades it's a uh, uh, tilted so how you can observe means uh, even in our home just we are having the ceiling fans in a ceiling fans the blades are not uh, flat i mean if you uh, if you observe it it's like uh, slightly tilted right slightly it tilted what's the reason the reason is aerodynamic property right so once you are having that uh, uh, tilt angle on the blade then only it will shut the air air and uh, give the uh, breeze to you the same way in the uh, wind turbine also your blades blades are tilted your blades are tilted so that it can able to extract the energy from the wind right so uh, this angle the blades is tilted so that will be called as tilt angle that will be called as tilt angle by changing the angle of the blade you can able to uh, change the energy captured by the wind turbine right so that you have to know and that, uh, another thing uh, how many uh, number of blades you have seen the wind turbine normally normally we can able to see three blade systems right three blade systems so uh, they will go with the odd number of blades why they are going with the odd number of blades means if you look at that if you are having the even number of blades i can consider the two blade system or four blade system so what will happen if one blade on that uh, 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 top it's in the straight then another blade on the bottom so that is uh, behind this uh, tower am i right so if one blade is on the top at one particular time you can consider so one blade is straight uh, uh, straight on the top and in the bottom if you look at that that will be your uh, uh, front in front of your uh, tower so what will happen during the uh, during the wind condition at that particular uh, at the at the particular time so the top blade faces the high wind velocity and the bottom blade will face the low wind velocity why because on the back side of this blade you are having the tower right so that will give the side effect to the uh, wind so the bottom blade faces the less wind less wind velocity and the top blade faces the high wind velocity so what will happen just you will get the mechanical stability issues because the top blade uh, will go back and it will affect the aerodynamics of the system so that that's what people will normally will not prefer the even number of blades in the wind turbines so they will go with the on number of blades so here just they prefer a three blade system for the wind turbines people may ask that why not five blade so if you are increasing the number of blades if you are increasing the number of blades then the cost of the system will increase even the single blade itself it will cost you around uh, 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 near to crore rupees so almost in a, uh, uh, some 50 to 70 lakhs even depending upon the size of the wind turbine so that's what if you are increasing the number of blades then again to increase the cost of the system 
right? So that's what they would prefer the three blades in the uh, wind turbines. So another thing, just here uh, on the top of the tower, just we are having this portion, right? This portion. So this portion will be called as naturally. This portion will be called as naturally. So in naturally, you are having the low speed shaft and that low speed shaft is connected to your high speed shaft uh, through gearbox, through gearbox. Then this high speed shaft is connected to your generator, right? So now the question for us is, why we are using the gearbox so gearbox normally used to match up the uh, speed of the generator so as electrical engineer we know that if you are using the four pole uh, uh, four pole generator for 50 hertz system what is the synchronous speed the synchronous speed is 1500 rpm so if you are saying it's a 1500 rpm then uh, what is the speed of this rotor so if you look at that uh, wind turbines the wind turbine speed in RPM is almost, uh, you can say, uh, 30 RPM to 70 RPM. So depending upon the size of the generator. So 70 RPM to 1500 RPM, is it possible? It's not possible, right? So for that purpose, just you are using the gen uh, gearbox in the in between your low speed sap and high speed sap. So this will convert the uh, 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 low speed power to high speed power, right? Okay, so here in the uh, high speed sap, we are having the mechanical braking. So just we can have the uh, brake source. And at the same time, uh, uh, if you look at it, this generate uh, in the generator, uh, just we are having some kind of uh, uh, controllers. So this controller is normally uh, used for controlling the generator. So that we can take it as a power electronic controllers also. Uh, we will discuss in the future slides why we are using the controllers here right so apart from these uh, parts we are having the animometers wind van uh, uh, what is the purpose of animometer here means to measure the wind velocity or you can say wind speed so this animometer can be useful for measuring the wind velocity or wind speed the wind van measure the direction of the wind wind van will measure the direction of the wind so these are the feedbacks to the wind turbines. So animometer, wind velocity, wind van, that's a uh, wind direction. So here uh, in nature, uh, just we can say the wind direction will keep on change. So we cannot uh, uh, face this turbine in the one, one direction. So depending upon the wind direction, you have to rotate this naturally. You have to rotate this naturally. So for rotating this naturally, you, uh, you must know the wind direction. So which direction the wind is coming. So depending upon the wind direction, the wind van feedback will be given to the yard drive. So here just we are carrying on electrical drive. So that uh, electrical drive is connected between your tower and your naturally. So uh, depending upon the feedback, your yard drive can rotate your naturally. So this is a one kind of electrical drive. So this will be helpful to rotate your naturally. So just think of it. You are having a, 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 a almost uh, two to five tons of weight. That uh, five tons of weight, you have to rotate it. So for that, they will use the uh, uh, large size of uh, uh, electrical drive, right? So uh, this yard drive can rotate your naturally. So when we come into the cost analysis, this rotor components uh, uh, takes almost 20% of the uh, total cost and the generator component and power electronic converters, gearboxes having a 34% of the uh, cost. So then if you consider about the structures, that structures and uh, uh, tower, so almost it's having a 15% of the cost. So which one is having the majority, I mean, which, which one, uh, uh, I mean, take the uh, magic cost. It's a generator components. So generator and gearbox. So gearbox having the uh, higher cost. So that's what nowadays they are focusing on gearless wind turbines. So without, they are eliminating the uh, gear, uh, gear in the system and they are come up with the gearless wind turbines. So uh, people may ask that how they are matching the speed of the turbine. So now they are using uh, various uh, generator types 
then uh, like uh, permanent magnets and kind of generators so that generators will be uh, best option for gearless wind turbines even people are working on it to reduce the cost of the system okay so uh, uh, the uh, main thing what we need, need to know in the uh, this wind energy conversion system is turbine output so this turbine output is the uh, 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 mechanical power that we are getting a mechanical power from the uh, kinetic energy of the wind so that can be given as an input to your generator right so this is the turbine output power so that is a mechanical power that mechanical power you are giving as an input to your generator so that mechanical power you can write it as r pro a v q c p so how we are getting this expression means uh, you know the kinetic energy equation uh, so kinetic energy in the wind can be uh, uh, converted into power so that power you can uh, write it as r pro a v q c p so for uh, for the time being just i have skipped that derivation uh, if i go with the derivation again that will take uh, half an hour to explain to you so that's why just uh, directly i have co uh, come into this uh, equation so r pro a v q c p so in this row is the air density and A is the area and V is the wind velocity and CP is the power coefficient. Okay, so here rho is the air density. So if you are having the wind turbine on the location, so uh, depending upon the location, the density will change. So that uh, that is, you can say it's uh, depending upon the location. So location specific. Then area. So area already explained to you. So rotor area. So that rotor area, depending upon the length of the blade, if you are increasing the length of the blade, the area will increase. Am I right? So if you are uh, the uh, uh, blade length is the uh, radius of your uh, area of uh, rotor area. So once you are increasing the, that uh, blade length, then area will be increasing. So that means if you are increasing the length of the blade, then area will increase. So the power output also will increase, right? So, but uh, uh, it will be fixed during the manufacturing. Even the uh, wind turbine manufacturer, they fix the length of the blade, right? Okay. Then CP, next we will discuss, I mean, at last we'll come into this uh, wind velocity. Then before it, we'll discuss about the power coefficient, power coefficient CP. So in the CP, just we are having the, uh, bits limit right so this power coefficient depending upon the bits limit so the bits limit here uh, the value of the bits limit is 0.59 right 0.59 so this bits limit uh, decide the efficiency of the power conversion efficiency of the wind turbine so theoretical power conversion efficiency of the wind turbine is 59 percent right 59 percent so the power conversion efficiency of the wind turbine is 59 percent that too is a theoretical so in a real time you may get uh, uh, even uh, uh, 50 52 percent is the maximum right so that is the power conversion efficiency of the wind turbine so what is the power con conversion efficiency of the photovoltaic panels any idea power conversion efficiency of uh, photovoltaic panels Okay. Okay, so that's al almost we can say it's 18 percent to 20 percent, right? 18 to 20 percent. Okay, so when we come into the power characteristics, or we can say it's a wind turbine characteristics, uh, we can able to achieve from this. So now, once you understand this uh, power characteristics of the wind turbine. Then you can get to know why we need to use the power electronic converters right okay so first we'll uh, start with the turbine characteristics so in the turbine characteristics is uh, uh, flatter uh, 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 turbine speed versus turbine speed versus uh, mechanical power output right so in x-axis it's a turbine speed and y-axis it's a mechanical power output so here just we can consider the uh, 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 
I mean, in normally, just you'll get the different wind velocity. So just we can take one wind velocity and you can uh, substitute this wind velocity in that uh, power equation. So you'll get this uh, uh, power curve for point. Just I, I converted everything into per unit system. So for 0.5 per unit, if you consider the wind velocity is 0.5 per, 0.5 per unit, then you'll get the power output curve as it is. So by varying the by varying the wind turbine speed. So for the different wind turbine speed, you'll get this curve. So 0.6 per unit. If you are having the 0.6 per unit as a wind velocity, then you'll get this curve, right? So 0.7, this curve. 0.8, this curve. 0.9 this one and one, then you'll get this curve. So the, the, this curves are for particular wind velocity. So now I can consider my wind velocity is 0.9 per unit. That means uh, 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 as of now, I consider that wind velocity is constant, but in a uh, real time, wind velocity is not constant. But for my study here, for understanding this characteristic, I consider the wind velocity is constant. So at this wind velocity, 0.9 per unit wind velocity, just we can plot the uh, power output curve. So this is a power output curve you will get depending upon the wind turbine speed. So I can consider at, at this wind velocity, 0.9 per unit wind velocity, my turbine speed, my turbine speed is 1.2 per unit. My wind turbine speed is 1.2 per unit. So if my uh, wind velocity uh, wind velocity is 0.9 per unit, that time my wind turbine speed is 1.2 per unit. So what will be what, what will be my uh, output power? So my output power is 0.5 per unit, 0.5 per unit, right? So now I'm the wind velocity is constant, but I'm rotating my turbine, I'm rotating my turbine at 0.6 per unit. 0.6 per unit. So 0.6 per unit also, my output power is 0.5 per unit. So instead of operating at uh, 0.5 wind velocity and the 1.2 wind velocity, I'm trying to rotate my wind turbine. I'm rotating, I'm trying to rotate my wind turbine to reach 0.9 per unit. So at 0.9 per unit, my output power of the wind turbine is 0.7 almost. Fine. I mean, you can say it's a 0.75. Right. So which uh, which speed the wind turbine speed gives a maximum power output my 0.9 per unit uh, wind turbine speed will give the maximum power output at the 0.9 per unit wind velocity. So always I prefer to operate at this point. I always I prefer to operate at this point to extract the maximum power from the wind. So what I need to do. For that, I have to change the wind turbine speed. So how do you change the wind turbine speed? Now that's a question. So how, how do you change the wind turbine speed? Do you have any idea? So because I, if I need to operate my turbine at this point, maximum power point, point, then I have to change the turbine speed. So how can I change the turbine speed in the wind turbine? By tilting the blades. Yeah, angle. someone saying it's a pitch angle control by changing the angle of the blade. Exactly. So if you are, that's what uh, earlier slide I have discussed by changing the pitch, uh, uh, by changing the tilt angle of the blade, you can able to change the speed of the turbine. So here, that is a mechanical control, right? That is a mechanical control. So changing the speed of the wind, uh, by ch for changing the, speed of the wind turbine, you have to change the pitch angle, right? By changing the pitch angle, you can able to change the uh, speed of the turbine, right? Exactly. Any other method? So here, if you are using this pitch angle, then the problem is uh, uh, because uh, your wind turbine is uh, uh, huge. So just we are having the huge inertia. So uh, your response will be slower because of the high inertia. So uh, this what that, that's what this method is called mechanical control. 
this method is called mechanical the pitch angle control that means uh, by changing the tilt angle of the blade you are changing the speed of the turbine so that is a mechanical control normally we will will not prefer the mechanical control for the wind turbine system for uh, implementing the maximum power point tracking uh, the reason is uh, uh, your wind turbine having the high inertia so it will take time to uh, uh, give the response so your response time is poor so that's what we won't prefer so what's the other idea so indirectly you are controlling the speed of the wind turbine how you are how you are indirectly controlling the speed of the wind turbine means uh, with the wind turbine you, what you are connecting you are connecting the electrical machine that's a generator right the generator is coupled with the wind turbine so is that possible to change the speed of the machine possible to change the turbine speed right so indirectly you are controlling the speed of the turbine by changing the speed of your electrical generator or electrical machine so electrical machine is uh, coupled with your turbine so how you can change this control of the machine control of the generator just you are having the you should have the power electronic converters at the status side so once you are having the power electronic converter by implementing the scalar control or vector control uh, you can say it's a field oriented control you can able to change the speed of the machine that's a that's a kind of uh, speed control in electrical drives you may study about the electrical drive subject so whatever the techniques they are using over there you can use the same techniques to control the speed of your generator in the another two quadrants so that can be useful for changing the turbine speed once you can able to change the turbine speed then it's possible for you to implement the maximum power point tracking in the wind energy conversion system right so this is the uh, uh, maximum power point tracking in the wind turbines so almost uh, uh, similar to your photovoltaic system in a photovoltaic system also just we are having the maximum power point tracking so earlier they have rotated uh, uh, i mean they have rotated the uh, photovoltaic panels uh, that's what if you have seen uh, they may uh, incorporate the uh, 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 stepper motor in that uh, structure then uh, depending upon the uh, uh, time they will rotate the uh, panels so that is a mechanical control so nowadays people are come up with the uh, convert anyhow in a photovoltaic you, you must have the converters so in the converters you can able to change the VI characteristics of that uh, uh, photovoltaic panel so by having the uh, VI characteristics then it will be easy for you to track the maximum power point tracking in the PV system right okay so from this just we can have this uh, characteristics so here this characteristics is uh, uh, power output versus wind velocity so here just we are having the cutting speed so in the cutting speed you can able to start your uh, generator to generate the power so below cutting speed normally they won't operate the uh, machine as a generator why because uh, below cutting speed uh, 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 i mean typically the cutting speed is two meter per second to five meter per second so depending upon the size of the turbine so in the two meter per second or three meter per second of the wind velocity they will not uh, uh, operate the machine why because whatever the uh power is generated from the wind turbine that is enough for uh, uh, compensating the losses in the generator so uh, uh of course uh, in a status side if you measure the power you won't get any power right so that's what uh, if you're operating below current speed uh, that will be in the loss so uh, uh, once the current speed reaches your wind velocity is more than three meter per second or five meter per second then they will start to operate the uh, uh, turbine to generate the power. So here, if you look at it from cutting speed to rated speed, just we can say is the rated speed. Uh, I can say the rated speed is uh, 1,520 uh, RPM uh, in a generator. Here, the rated speed is typical value is 12 meter per second to 15 meter per second. So during this time, you are implementing the maximum power point tracking so your maximum power point tracking algorithm will be placed between cutting speed to rated speed so if you look at in this curve so from point four to one your uh, maximum power point tracking region so in this maximum power i mean here we have to implement the maximum power point tracking 
So for implementing the maximum power point tracking, just we have to use the generator control. So generator control means you are changing the speed of the generator uh, with the help of power electronic converter, right? So that's what they mentioned, it's a generator control. So MPPT is implemented in this region. So after rated speed to cutout speed, your power output of the turbine is constant, irrespective of the wind velocity. You can say it's a 15 meter per second to 22 meter per second. So in this region, your output of the turbine is constant irrespective of the wind velocity. So because it's a rated, here it reaches the rated power. So that, I mean, that's the power output of the turbine. So we cannot uh, go above that power rating of the uh, turbine. So the, you'll get the rated power from this region, rated, uh, I mean, rated uh, uh, wind velocity to cutout wind velocity. So cutout speed, you can say it's a 22 meter per second or 25 meter per second so uh, if your wind velocity increases about 25 meter per second normally they will stall the turbine stall the turbine means stop the turbines so they won't operate above that speed why because uh, that will the gusty wind speed will damage the wind turbine so this is the power characteristics of the wind turbine once you know the power characteristic then you know what's the max what's the maximum power point tracking then uh, you know the importance of the power electronic converters here. Why we need to use the power electronic converter. So here you are using the power electronic converter to control the speed of the generator. So by controlling the speed of the generator, you are controlling the speed of the turbine to implement the maximum power point tracking. So that's what you are using the power electronic converters in wind energy conversion system. So here you are using the power converters as well as your source also. It's an intermittent one. So always it injects the harmonics to your grid, right? So for mitigating that harmonics, then you have to go with the uh, uh, different control techniques, or we can go with some fax devices at the distribution side, right? So any uh, clarification up to now? If you're having any doubt, please let me know in this uh, slides. One minute. Any clarification? No. Okay, then we move forward. Okay, so now uh, just we can classify the wind energy convert system as grid connected system and standalone system. So in a grid connected system, you are generating the power and you are uh, 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 feeding into the grid, then that can be used in uh, some other location, right? So what are the control strategies normally you have to implement here? So you can take any paper, whether it's in a photovoltaic system or wind energy conversion system, those who are dealing with the grid connected uh, wind energy conversion system or grid connected photovoltaic system. So what are the control parameters they are using this. Do you have any idea about it? Normally people may discuss about the active, uh, uh, independent control of active and reactive power control. Because once you are connecting to the grid, then you have to control the active and reactive power in the, ne uh, 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 in the network. So in that, for uh, they may discuss about the active and reactive power control. And some people, they may discuss about the synchronization. So grid synchronization, why? Because just you have to connect to the grid. So for that, people are working on PLLs, uh, phase lock loops to uh, synchronize to the grid. This aspect they may discuss. And another aspect, people may discuss about the implementation of the maximum power point tracking. They will propose uh, uh, different types of uh, maximum power point tracking in grid connected system. Right. So if you take any grid connected wind, uh, wind or photovoltaic system, um, most of the papers, they may discuss about active and reactive power control. Uh, other way, uh, 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 otherwise, they will discuss about the grid synchronization issues with the PLL, phase lock loops. This is another, another aspect. Then in, uh, in other way, they may discuss about the maximum power point tracking algorithms. 
so these are the uh, 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 different uh, research areas you can say in a grid connected system uh, 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 in addition to that uh, they may talk about the supervisory control in the microgrids so like uh, eye landing and uh, uh, reconnecting uh, your uh, uh, dgs to the system so they will discuss about this thing and uh, uh, in a power system perspective people may discuss about the placement of this dgs so where you can uh, uh, place this dgs uh, in a distributed network for uh, uh, maintaining the voltage index or you can say it's the performance in, uh, indices or uh, you can say the uh, voltage stability is used under they may discuss with the grid connected system right so these are the research areas they will discuss in the grid connected system of course uh, uh, they may discuss about the power quality issues in a grid so these are the uh, five areas they will uh, focus in the grid connected system so when we come into the standalone system what are the control parameters in a standalone system just you will connect your loads whether uh, uh, i can connect my home or connect my uh, commercial buildings or uh, uh, one particular area in the uh, city will be used uh, in the standalone system so that uh, standalone system you are connecting your load so it's it will not be connected to your grid so as a consumer what's my expectation in this uh, uh, supply system i always expect constant voltage and constant frequency in a ac system if it's a dc grid uh, nowadays people are talking about the dc micro grid so in a dc micro grid i can look at the voltage magnitude just i have to maintain the constant voltage in the dc grids right so in this one uh, uh, because here in a standalone system you are having only load and the source so here the source also is the intermittent one right so it, as well as your load also it's intermittent i mean if you are connecting to your area uh, you cannot comment over the uh, your neighbor's load uh, sometimes they may switch on switch off the loads even they will turn on uh, acs or turn on washing machines the pattern may change so in a load perspective also it's an intermittent one and your source also intermittent one is it possible to match up this uh, source and demand supply or you can say it's a supply and demand so in always uh, when you talk about any system uh, electrical system you always need to look at the uh, power balance so is it possible to uh, have the power balance in this system even so source is intermittent one and your uh, load also is intermittent one so supply and demand both are uh, uh, intermittent one so how we can res uh, resolve this issue how you can solve this issue in the standalone systems any idea anyone any idea how you can uh, uh, resolve this power balance issue in this standalone systems yes group control is it possible group control it's not possible so uh, because uh, in a group control you can uh, uh, once your uh, supply is more than the demand then you can go with the group control uh, in a one perspective i can say if if your supply okay uh, wind or photovoltaic is more than your load then you can use the group control uh, if my load is more than the supply then uh, uh, you cannot be able to compensate it as uh, mr murlidhar said you can integrate the energy storage systems like uh, you can integrate the battery or uh, you can integrate the ultra capacitor ultra capacitors can give the uh, uh, higher power density if you are if you need the high energy density then you have to go with the battery storage systems so once you are having the battery storage in this uh, uh, in the standard plan systems you can able to uh, uh, resolve this power balance issue right yeah so that's what people will talk uh, much about the uh, 
uh, bat uh, i mean integration of the battery in the standalone system okay so uh, uh, in the uh, earlier just we had discussed the different components in the wind turbine now we are going to discuss about uh, various components in the wind energy conversion system you can classify i mean you can classify as a mechanical power components and electrical power components so here uh, uh, the rotor gearbox even the generator also will be uh, coming under the mechanical power component here the rotor can be useful for power conversion because the rotor is convert i mean uh, 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 converting the uh, kinetic energy from the wind to mechanical power so that's what it can be used for power conversion and control so how you are controlling means by changing the uh, uh, pitch angle uh, or tilt angle of the blade you can able to control the turbine of uh, control the speed of the turbine so so that i can say the rotor can be useful for power conversion and control purpose the gearbox so gearbox is useful for transmitting the power so that's what we can say is a power transmission so here if you look at it i put as a optional why because uh, in a gearless wind turbines normally they uh, they won't use the gearboxes so here again uh, uh, your generator and power converters these two can be useful for uh, converting the power so this can be uh, converting the mechanical power into electrical power then here uh, it convert uh, dc power to ac or ac to dc here also just we are using the power conversion we are using this converter for power conversion so i put power conversion and control this will be these two i can classify as electrical drive so control also you can able to do it so in a fixed speed wind turbines you won't find this power converter so that's what i put optional and here the power transformer can be useful for matching the grid voltage and your uh, uh, wind turbine voltage that means the generate voltage so it always not necessary both are same so that's what you'll use the power transformer for voltage balancing it's not only for voltage balancing this power transformer will give the isolation between isolation electrical isolation for grid as well as your system so if any fault happen the grid that won't be transmitted to your system or if any fault happen the system that won't be uh, 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 i mean uh, transmitted into your grid so this uh, uh, transformer will give the voltage balancing as well as uh, isolation yeah in this just we are having the two types one is a fixed speed wind turbine and the variable speed wind turbines so uh, uh, in a very simple way i can put the things in a fixed speed wind turbine normally they won't use uh, maximum power point tracking algorithms so uh, if you are not implementing the maximum power point tracking algorithms if you calculate the energy uh, 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 energy output of that uh, system for a year that will be limited as compared to variable speed wind turbine because in a variable speed wind turbine you can able to implement the maximum power point tracking so the energy output of the turbine is higher as compared to fixed speed wind turbines so here uh, uh you can see here in a fixed speed wind turbines normally spool cage induction generators are employed and in the variable speed wind turbines you you may use uh, permanent magnet synchronous generators dfi gw for induction generators and wrigs wound rotor induction generators so here in this generator types you can able to implement the maximum power point tracking in a fixed speed wind turbine you cannot able to implement the maximum power point tracking algorithms right so here pmsg Uh, is a permanent magnet machine, and here DFIG and WRIG. Normally, you'll use the slip ring induction machines. Uh, 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 I hope that you may already know about it. Now, induction machine are having spool cage and slip ring machines. So, uh, spool cage machines you can use it in the fixed speed wind turbines. Slip ring machines you can use it in the variable speed wind turbines. Uh, in terms of DFIG and WRIG, fixed speed generators. in a fixed speed generators normally they won't prefer uh, synchronous machine i mean uh, we won't use our alternators in the wind turbines why because uh, in uh, alternators you are having the two types of winding one is armature and field so in the field you have to give a dc supply in armature you will get the ac supply so normally this is uh, 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 two types of supplies so in wind turbine normally located in the remote areas so normally they won't prefer this type of two types supply in the uh, system at the same time if you are using alternator uh, uh, if i want to integrate to the grid my output uh, uh, frequency of the generator is uh, uh, generator should be 50 hertz so not be 49 hertz or 51 hertz so if 49 51 means you cannot able to connect to the grid 
so for getting a 50 hertz power supply then you have to uh, operate this machine at constant speed uh, i can say if it's a four pole machine for 50 hertz system then just we have to operate at 1500 rpm at constant speed but in a wind uh, i mean uh, in case of wind energy conversion system your wind is intermittent one wind velocity you cannot uh, get constant so it will keep on change so it's not possible to operate at a constant speed uh, that's what these internal generators are not suitable for uh, wind turbine application the best candidate for uh, uh, fixed speed wind turbines are spool cage induction generator why because uh, we can consider the ruggedness of the construction uh, i mean because of the ruggedness uh, you need not to have much maintenance of this uh, uh, machines so that's what they prefer uh, these generators another reason is uh, you need not to uh, synchronize these methods for connecting your generator to the grid whereas in a synchronous generator just you have to use some kind of synchroscopes or in your lab you may have experience with the dot lamp method so here it's not required so once uh, if you are connecting connecting to the grid it will act as a motor if your wind speed is less as compared to uh, below synchronous speed then uh, if your if your wind velocity is more then you can able to rotate this machine above synchronous speed then this will act as a generator so whether it will act as a generator or motor it always it always draws the reactive power from the grid draws always the reactive power from the grid so depending upon the motor or generator operation it will inject the active power. i mean if it's a generator then your active power is from your generator to the grid if it's act as a motor then active power is from your grid to your machine right but uh, uh, if you calculate the reactive power always the reactive power is taken from the grid to machine so that's what this machine always operates in the lagging power factor operation it always operates in the lagging power factor operation so for that purpose for maintaining the uh, power factor at the point of common coupling normally people prefer to connect the capacitor bands at the stator side so that we can able to maintain the uh, 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 power factor at the point of common coupling right so here the major disadvantage of this uh, fixed speed wind turbines is lag of mppt technique so the same self uh, induction machine you can use it for supplying the standalone loads so here uh, uh, as i already told you uh, if you want to operate this machine as a motor or generator you have to give a magnetizing current to the machine that means reactive power to the machine so if you connect to the standalone loads you won't get any kind of uh, reactive power source in the standalone loads so that time it won't uh, uh, you know you cannot uh, get the uh, voltage at the stator side so for that purpose you need to connect the capacitor banks at the stator side so this uh, excitation capacitors give the magnetizing current to build up the voltage in the stator side so how the voltage is built up means by the help of the residual voltage in the machine by if you are i mean just we will have the residual uh, voltage in the machine uh, with the help of residual magnet uh, residual voltage and this uh, excitation capacitor you can get the voltage at the stator side so that can be supplied to your standalone loads the major problem with this uh, topology is you cannot get the constant voltage and constant frequency at the uh, load terminals so this voltage and frequency will be depending upon the speed of the machine speed of the machine and generator parameters and capacitor values excitation capacitor values and the loads so here the load also will keep on change even as i told if you are supplying the standalone loads so if you are having only one load you can say it's a constant load but if you are supplying to your uh, you know home or your buildings then your uh, load will keep on change so everything will be depending uh, everything will be cause the voltage and voltage magnitude and frequency of the stator side right so for maintaining the constant voltage and constant frequency then again you have to use the uh, power electronic converters in between and you have to uh, regulate the voltage at the load side so here when you, you can able to regulate the voltage and frequency means whenever your supply is more than the load please note it down whenever your supply is more than the load you can able to control it 
even if your uh, demand is more than the source then you have to integrate the energy storage here there are various uh, types of uh, uh, variable speed uh, generators so here permanent magnet semiconductor generator and school cage induction generator you can use it for uh, uh, variable speed wind turbine application uh, here if you look at these two topologies permanent magnet semiconductor generator and school cage induction generator uh, in this the converter rating if you calculate the converter ratings this converter ratings are equal to the machine rating in both the cases the converter ratings are equal to the machine ratings what's the reason because whatever the power is generated here that power should be channeled through this converter to the grid all the power generated from here is uh, fed into the grid through this power electronic converters so that obviously the power converter rating must be equal or more than the machine rating if i say it's a one megawatt then your converter rating also one mea so if you are having one megawatt of school cage generator the power rating of this converter is more than one mba so why means uh, why here more than the machine rating means here uh, the school cage index generator always takes the reactive power from the source so here it's not directly connected to the grid here just we are having the back to back converters so this converter will provide the reactive the required reactive power to the machine so that's what here you cannot use the diode bridge rectifier but you have to use the bidirectional converter that controlled rectifier you have to use but in this case in the pmse machine even here you can use uh, uh, diode bridge rectifier uh, because uh, this not uh, this will not take any reactive power from the any other source because just you are having the permanent magnets in the machine itself but here your school cage machine required the reactive power so always this rectifier will be the control rectifier so that will give the uh, reactive power to the machine right so in this case uh, uh, grid synchronization is complex why because just we have to use the pls in the control strategy to take care of the synchronization and here also just we have to use the pls for synchronization so in this both uh, topologies the uh, independent control of active and reactive power is possible so we can able to do the independent control of active and reactive power by using the field oriented controls right so next we move to the uh, two topologies one is a uh, wound rotor induction generator and another one is double field induction generators in a wound rotor induction generators if you look at it in a both the cases we are using the slip ring machines so these two are slip ring machines so in a slip ring machines the strator and rotor car, rotor windings are accessible so here the strator is connected to the grid and in the rotor windings just we are connecting the diode bridge rectifier and the dc to dc to dc converter along with the fixed resistor and here if you look at that the strator is connected to the grid and the rotor windings just we are connecting the back to back converters in the rotor we are connecting the back to back converters so here here in these two cases wound rotor induction generator and double field induction generator if you calculate the power converter ratings this power converter ratings are 30% of the machine rating here also this converter ratings are 30% of the um, machine uh, rating so why we are using 30% of the power converter rating in these two uh, topologies do you have any idea I already know about the uh, slip ring machines or in a school cage machines right so what's the reason we are using a 30 percent uh, i mean one by third of the converter rating we are using here right one by third of the converter rating of the machine so what's the reason do you know the reason behind it the reason is uh here uh in a school cage machine also we know that in a rotor winding we'll get the slip power just we will have the slip power so the power output of power output or power injecting to the rotary is in terms of slip right in terms of slip so if i say it's the 30 percent slip then just your rotor winding will handle one will handle only the 30 percent of the uh, uh strator winding power right so that's what just here in a rotor winding 
you have to deal with the slip power. So slip power is only the 30% of your machine rating. So that's what here in a both the cases, you are using the 30% of the converted rating of the machine, right? So that's the beauty of it. If you are using the full, I mean, the earlier cases, just you are using the full converter rating, right? So, but here, just your converter rating is only 30%. So think of the cost. The cost is very less. So just we have to use only one by third, right? So uh, that's an advantage of these two converter topologies. And here, uh, when we come into this wound rod induction generator, <clears throat> have you seen this topology anywhere? Yeah, of course, in, a, in your electrical drive, you may read that it's a rotor resistance control method of uh, uh, speed of the slip ring machines, right? Is a rotor resistance control method. So uh, in a rotor resistance control method, just we are by, by, by varying the duty ratio of this DC to DC, DC to DC converter, you are changing the equivalent resistance of the rotor windings. You are uh, changing the equivalent resistance of the rotor windings, right? So here, if you look at that, by changing the uh, equivalent resistance of the rotor, then you can able to do the speed control, whether it's a mo motor or it's a generator. It's, uh, you can do it in a both uh, operation, in a uh, generation as well as in the motoring. So here, if you look at that, in the chopper, here it's a diode bridge rectifier, so all our uncontrolled switches, diodes, here in a chopper, you'll use only one single switch. Am I right? By controlling this single switch, you can able to control the speed of the machine, right? So controlling the single switch, it's a very easy one as compared to, uh, I mean, if you're a power electronic engineer, you might aware of it. Instead of controlling the inverter, if you're having the chopper, DC to DC converter, uh, generating the pulses and all easy for DC to DC converters, right? So that's what here single switch, single control switch. So controlling this single control switch is easy uh, as compared to this all topologies. But here was a limitation. That limitation is not here. You can able to use this topology for above synchronous speed only. Why? Because if your machine is rotating above synchronous speed, then only it will act as a generator, right? So if your uh, uh, speed is below synchronous speed, you cannot able to generate the power. So uh, you can say if the 1500 RPM is the synchronous speed, then 1520 or 1540 RPM, just we can reach the rated output power of the generator. So only just we can use the uh, uh, small, I mean, above synchronous speed in the slip range. But in the WF induction generator, you are having the back-to-back -back converters or connected in the rotor. So by controlling this back-to-back uh, -back converter, you can able to use this DFIGs for for uh, for uh, electrical power generation in the wide speed range. So we can operate at uh, below, below synchronous speed also. We can able to operate this machine as a generator. Below synchronous speed as well as super synchronous speed, it will act as a generator. So you will have the wide speed range of uh, uh, operation so this wide speed range of operation will be helpful for implementing the maximum power point tracking in the wider speed range so a wider speed range means you can able to generate the power from low speed to high speed so your speed range is wider as compared to wound rotor index generator so that's the beauty of uh, this double fan index generator so that's what uh, people prefer double fan index generators for high power rating. So for offshore wind turbines also, they will use this kind of double fan index generators. Uh, here, if you look at it, another advantage of wound rotor index generators, there is no converters connected to the grid. So here, the converters are connected at the rotor side. So the harmonics injection to the grid is less as compared to other topologies. In other topologies, your converters are connected to the grid or here also the converter is connected to the grid but if you uh, coming to this wound rod index generator there is no converter directly connected to the grid so only it's connected through the wind uh, mason so here the winding in the mason itself it lacked as a filter for this uh, converter so here it will mitigate the current harmonics to the 
great, right? So here, doubly free index generator operation. I'll come to you, come to the next few next slides. So here, just in the uh, wound order index generators, just we have uh, uh, modified the topology. So here, the modified topology means in the uh, wound order index generator, as we discussed, just we are having the chopper. So after the chopper, they have used the fixed resistors. So what we proposed is, we proposed here is. Uh, variable resistors that means variable resistance means why we have proposed i mean consider the variable resistor means in earlier cases your uh, uh, the power whatever the power dissipated in that resistors that will going as a heat so that will be wasted so instead of wasting that power we are planning to use it for space seating applications so we are considered as a variable resistors right that's what we put the variable resistors here and in addition to that, even if you consider uh, even your space heating loads are not available, that power can be used to charge the batteries. So for charging the battery, just we have come up with only the single diode. So we, even we haven't uh, used any kind of converters, DC to DC converters for charging this battery. We have used the simple diode. diode. Even uh, with a simple diode, we can able to charge the batteries. I'll tell you how it means. Uh, uh, here, uh, I can consider there is no load. So if there is no load means there is no speed, space heating load. So no space heating load means your resistor value is higher or lower? Your resistor value is higher. Your resistor value is higher. So during that time, what will happen? Your voltage will be higher at this point. Your voltage will be because it's a open circuit because if you say it's a higher resistor it's a open circuit so during the open circuit your voltage at this point is higher higher than this voltage that time this diode will be forward biased and that will charge the battery so then if you consider the space heating load is more right so you are having a lot of space heating loads that time what what will be your resistance the resistance value is very minimal, right? That time, if your uh, resistance value is minimal, almost it's a short circuit. That time, you won't get any voltage here. So this voltage will be higher than this. So this will be reverse biased, and it will uh, start to discharging the battery, right? So that time, battery will not discharge because it will be it will this diode will be reverse biased and block the uh, uh, current from battery to this source. So only this can be uh, used for supplying this space heating loads. So here, by varying this uh, diode, I mean, due to ratio, uh, by varying the on off of this switch, you can able to vary the vary the resistance value. Because this resistance value also is keep on changing. But here, by varying the due to ratio of this switch also, you can able to vary the uh, resistance value so that we can able to control the speed of this generator so that we can able to implement the maximum power point tracking. So here our aim is instead of wasting the power as a heat in the fixed resistor, we are considered as a variable resistor. That means for space heating application. So even the space heating uh, loads are not available, that power can be used for charging the batteries. So with the help of single diode, even it's not uh, a much cost. So with a single diode, you can able to charge the batteries. So here the limitation. I mean, you can take any system, engineering system, whatever the new system you are proposing, there will be some limitations. So in our system also, there will be limitations. What the limitation means, here, once the battery is fully charged, you are not having the battery management system here. So just you have to. Uh, remove the battery and you have to connect a new battery. So that is a manual operation. So if you are having the DC to DC converter, you can have the BMS, battery management system. So that battery management system can take care of the charging and discharging of the battery. When the battery is fully charged, then if you are connecting your power converter here, DC to DC converter, that uh, the BMS algorithm, the DC to DC converter, helps to discharge the battery to this space heating applications. Uh, 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 so that your battery will not be 100% charged. At the same time, uh, as a space, I mean, if I'm having the space heating, so whenever I'm lagging with that uh, power from the wind, 
in that time i can use this battery power to discharge it but in this case in our case it's not possible because of the diode right so this is the uh, proposed uh, grid connected wrig system so in this when we talk about that uh, harmonics so harmonics uh, uh, again i told you uh, as i already told in the previous slide here the converters are connected in the rotor windings so here there is no converter directly connected to the grid so what will happen this won't inject any harmonics to your grid so uh, here just your winding the machine will act as a filtering uh, 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 will act as a filter to mitigate the harm harmonics at the same time uh, this induction machine will uh, draw the reactive power from the grid so for maintaining the power factor at the point of common coupling just we have connect the, connected the capacitors that will provide the reactive power support to the machine right so this is our proposed topology so without any harmonics so that's what our main aim here is one is energy conservative perspective another one is uh, power quality issues power quality means reactive power compensation also is a uh, 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 power quality issue so for that just we are connected uh, uh, we we have prefer the very simple concepts so just we connected the capacitors and here there is i mean we have taken care to uh, uh, do not connect any power converters directly to the grid so that's what we are connected to the rotor winding so by uh, having this topology we can uh, have the quality power to the grid as well as uh, uh, we can save a lot of energy in the battery or uh, uh, by using it to the space heating loads so this paper we have published in the iet power electronics and in this also just we have created some speed sensorless algorithms so speed sensorless algorithm and change in topology so uh, uh, for time being just i'm skipping that uh, control strategy so here uh, just i'll give you some overview here we have proposed unified control so what is unified control means whenever the grid is in demand you can uh, uh, grid is in particular demand right so if it's giving the demand you can uh, 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 only you have to supply that power so that time your uh, 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 system will operate in the constant power output power mode so whenever the power uh, requirement or power demand is more in the grid you can operate the machine in mppt uh, up mppt mode so mppt mode we can able to generate the more power from the wind that can be injected to the grid so how you are switch over from uh, mppt to output power mode and uh, uh, output power mode to mppt mode means by using the descent block so in the descent block just we are giving the demand if you are having any power demand uh, other than zero if you are having any value here then uh, you are you will get the error signal from this mppt mode block so that time it will your system will operate in the uh, uh mppt operation so if you are having any value other than zero that means demand you are getting the demands uh, from the grid operator so that time your uh, system will operate in the constant power output a constant power mode right so here that error signals uh, you are switching the error signals here so if it's in a, a mppt mode block you'll get the error signal from this block as a uh, speed as error so uh, once if you are having the pd then that will operate in the output power mode that time you will get the error as power error so that will be given as a error to your pi controller so whether it's a p error or n error then your control will uh, uh, eliminate the error and uh, here just you will go to the pwm generation so here only one switch is there so just we can use the simple pwm technique to generate the pulse for this uh, controllers right so these are some experimental photographs uh, for your purpose so everything we have built in our laboratory and we have tested it and next when we come into the w fair induction generators uh, there are four modes of operation in the w fair induction generators uh, two modes of operation in the uh, motoring and two modes of operation in the generation so whenever your torque is positive if you look at that uh, uh, four modes of operation depending upon the torque and speed 
if your torque is positive then you can say the machine is operate as a motor when whenever your torque is negative whenever your torque is negative you can say is a generation you can say is a generation if your torque is positive that's a motoring so in a motoring always you will draw the uh, mechanical power from the shaft so that's what you can see here the power output from the shaft is outward so uh, then just uh, if you are saying it's a motoring then you have to give a supply to the stator so that's what the stator power is towards the machine in both the cases right so here it's a subsynchronous motoring and supersynchronous motoring so subsynchronous motoring means if you are using a spool cage and spool cage machine below synchronous speed will act as a motor so that's what uh, here the speed access is speed so below synchronous below synchronous this is a synchronous speed line below synchronous speed it lacked as a subsynchronous motoring so it's a normal motoring so normal no motoring just uh, uh, you will uh, get the power output from the rotor you will get the power output from the rotor and again it's injecting back to the grid super synchronous motoring just you have to inject the power in the rotor that's what this direction is changing just you have to inject the power to the rotor so and uh, in the generation so normally we'll uh, this two modes of operation we can use it for any electrical drive application like even nowadays people are exploring the uh, dfim for uh, electrical vehicle applications uh, then these two modes of operation subsynchronous generation and super synchronous generation normally used for uh, wind turbine application so here also if you look at that if i say it's a generation you are uh, uh, injecting the mechanical power in the shaft so that's what uh, this pm is towards the machine pm is towards the machine in this both the cases and here the strator if you look at that it's a generator so just you are extracting the power output from the strator so that's what the power the power is output here in this strator coil also power is output so depending upon the subsynchronous and super synchronous you are injecting or extracting the power in the rotor that's a matter here so, so super synchronous normally it's a generator like a school cage induction generator so uh, in normal operation you are extracting the power output from the rotor so in the sub synchronous means just you are uh, you know overcome the uh, normal principle so that's what just we are injecting the uh, power into the rotor so that's what in here if you look at that you are injecting the power into the rotor right so here what i want to convey here is for motoring generation how you can differ means depending upon the torque if your torque is positive you can say it's a generation torque is negative it's sorry uh, torque is positive it's a motoring and torque is negative is a generation so here uh, uh, super synchronous uh, uh, motoring and sub synchronous generation so these two modes if you look at these two modes you are injecting the power into the rotor you are injecting the power into the rotor in sub synchronous motoring and super synchronous generation you are extracting the power from the stator you are extracting the power from the uh, rotor sorry rotor right pr here also pr you are extracting the power from the rotor so this is the modes of operation in the double twin detection generators so here you are using a back to back converter at a rotor terminals for extracting the power from the rotor and injecting back to the grid or you are drawing the power from the grid and injecting to the rotor so this is if you are considering the i mean uh, now now we are talking about the uh, generation operation so subsynchronous generation super synchronous generation so in a subsynchronous generation just we are drawing the power from the grid or injecting to the rotor so super synchronous generation you are extracting the slip power from the rotor or injecting back to the great so this is the operation in the uh, wf index generator right so here what you are doing when you are uh, injecting just you are taking from the grid when you are extracting from the rotor you are uh, feeding back to the grid so what uh, what will happen here in the conventional if you look at it this converter is connected to the grid so here once the converter is connected to the grid always injects the harmonics to the grid so that's what what we planned is just we are planning to remove this uh, converter from the grid points so once you remove this converter what will happen 
So here, uh, once you are injecting power to the rotor, you need some source. When you are extracting the power from the rotor, then you need some kind of uh, 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 load to dump it, right? So that's what uh, this sending and receiving it uh, doing it. So what we thought is, okay, we will remove this uh, grid side converter and we can connect the battery storage here. If you are connecting the battery storage, it will act as a sink and source. So once you are connecting the battery, whenever the power record, it will discharge the battery. Whenever it's power available, you can use that power to charge the battery. So that's what we have removed. And we propose the new converter topology for double fed induction generator. So once if you remove this converter from the grid, then uh, uh, there is no converter directly connected to the grid. So that will not pollute the grid. That means it will not inject any harmonics to the grid. So that's what we propose this uh, uh, single converter, single converter BFIG system. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the only system in the literature is available, single inverter battery storage based BFIG system. We are the first people we propose this kind of topology. Even we can uh, check it with the literature. So in a literature, we will find only this topology. It's available with a single converter, right? So uh, during the substance kernels, uh, just uh, this battery is uh, uh, discharging and feeding the power to the rotor. During the super synchronous generation, take the power and charge the battery. So just we have identified different modes of operation. Just we are having a five modes of operation, depending upon the wind power and the load and uh, how the battery power is there, that can be uh, discussed in this uh, 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 you know, uh, paper. If you want to uh, work on the DFID system, this, I mean, this work also is published as a 1IET paper. So earlier, uh, with the own rotor index generator, 1IET paper, this one is another IET paper, right? So just uh, this will be available in the uh, uh, online. You can refer it if you want further information on this topology. The same topology we are used for supplying the standalone loads. I mean, earlier just we have a grid. Here it's a standalone loads. Is another another paper that also is available in the, another IET paper. So we, that also you can refer the, for supplying the standalone loads. Earlier case we have to do the active and reactive power control. Here in the standalone system we have to uh, maintain the voltage and frequency constant at the static terminals. So by uh, controlling this uh, single inverter battery system, right? So for this also, just we are having the different modes of operation. So depending upon the availability of the wind power and load. So that battery power can change depending on that. So just we have explained the all modes of operation in the paper. You can, can refer it. This is the proposed control strategy. So earlier cases, if we have uh, discussed the double fed index generators, Always they prefer the uh, field oriented control methods. Uh, field oriented control, or we can say it's a vector control method. But here in our paper, we propose the scalar control, only just voltage magnitude and frequency values in nose. By measuring the stator voltage, you can get to know the voltage magnitude and frequency. So, based on that, you can have the uh, two parallel loops. And uh, uh, even the for SPWM purpose, we have generated our sinusoidal waveform in a DSP processor itself. So that will give the pure sine wave so that we can able to maintain the uh, uh, stator voltage and frequency without any power quality issues, without any harmonics in it. So uh, if you are taking the feedback from the stator voltage, once you are connecting the uh, diode bridge loads at the stator terminals, your voltage will be distorted. That voltage, you can take it for uh, uh, reference wave generation in your uh, SPWM. Then again, it will give the, give the uh, polluted uh, waveform from the uh, converter. So instead of that, we have used the uh, lookup table method for uh, generating the sine wave. So that sine wave can be used for the pulse width modulation. So that's uh, one of the novelty in this uh, control strategy. So that you will get the pure voltage at the static terminals. So these are some uh, uh, experimental and simulation results. Uh, if you really uh, want more information on this uh, system, you can refer our IET papers. So based on these three works, one is WRIG, one IET, then uh, uh, DFIG with uh, grid system is another paper. Same system, 
Plus, we have applied to the standalone loads for voltage. I mean, just we have done a voltage and uh, frequency control. This is another paper. And here we have proposed some uh, sorted starter induction generator in that uh, DFIG itself. So whenever you are not having the load, you can sort the starter circuit. You can sort the starter circuit. And by the help of the converter and battery system, you can make the virtual grid. Virtual grid means constant voltage and frequency you can make it here. Then you can rotate this uh, uh, wind turbine more than synchronous speed. Then it will act as a grid connected induction generators. So that's what we propose this topology as a sorted starter, sorted starter induction generator. We are sorting the starter. And because of this sorting the starter, just it's possible to uh, have the circulating current here. So that will produce the torque here, negative torque, then that will act as a generator. So that will be, that power can be used for charging the battery. So whenever you are not having any loads in the standalone system. So that time this, uh, I mean, this modes of operation, uh, we explained in detail. So that's what this also, uh, uh, we have published as a one IET paper. So these all works are uh, published as a four IET papers. So just if you are really interested on it, here our aim is to reduce the harmonics to the network. So how means instead of connecting the uh, converters directly into the grid, just we are connecting our uh, converters at the rotor side, right? So these are some results, you can check it out. Right, I think it's uh, time is still uh, almost twelve, so it's a time for uh, time to stop. Right, so that's why just uh, I finished the slides. If you are having any clarifications or any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Any questions from the audience side? So I'll be happy to answer the qu queries. If you have any doubt with this uh, for electronic converter topologies or controllers for uh, wind energy conversion systems. Sir, thank you very much, uh, session, sir. Uh, we'll wait yeah, for sure. answer session, sir. Our dear participants, kindly ask uh, questions or post in the chat box. I, I would like to thank Dr. Vijay Kumar, sir, for your sincere efforts in delivering the session, which is uh, really enlightened. Uh, for knowledge sharing in the area of wind energy conversion system and the power electronic converter, the battery charger you have explained. Thank you, sir, for spending your valuable time. Uh, in your yeah, thank, you, thank you very much, yeah, sir. Sure. If any questions from the audience, uh, no, no means I can uh, quit from here. Dear participants, kindly interact. Uh, I request all the participants. Sir, sir uh, which type of battery system you have used, sir? Was that only a uh, so not mean here uh, uh, you can depending upon the location whether it's a lead acid battery or uh, you can go with uh, uh, a normal battery that's not a matter even uh, nowadays uh, we are using lead acid batteries right so we can use lead acid batteries also if you want to reduce the size of the bat uh, battery pack but some papers I have seen they have used even flywheel along with the battery system in wind energy Sorry. conversion Sorry, your voice is not too much clear for me. Sir, in some papers I have seen, they have used okay. the five wheels along with the battery. Which one? Which one they are using along with the battery? Flywheel, sir. Flywheel. Yeah, flywheel storage. Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, flywheel also is one type of energy storage. Uh, that is a, a electromechanical end storage, right? Uh, we can say it's electromechanical end storage. So in that, if your if your system is in uh, higher capacity, then it will be useful for it will be useful to use the flywheel as energy storage. Here with the flywheel, the response is very slow because it's a mechanic. Again, just we are using the rotating machinery over there, right? So the response is slow, and as compared to the battery. 
so uh, uh, storage systems you can classify it as uh, uh, higher energy density and power density so if you, if you want a power density storage so for, for example uh, if you take the ultra capacitors ultra capacitors having the high power density that means uh, with a, a milliseconds or within a second you can able to release the huge amount of power uh, suddenly but uh, 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 when we talk about the energy density so energy density means uh, if you want to support that uh, power requirement for the longer duration that's not possible with the ultra capacitors so in that case just you have to go with the uh, ener high energy density uh, storage systems like uh, uh, flywheel a uh, flywheel also normally uh, they will they will use for medium term so short term means it's a uh, super capacitors medium term flywheel flywheel energy storage and for uh, high energy density that's a longer duration long term uh, for that people will prefer the uh, battery storage so why they are hybridizing this uh, short term medium term long term energy storage means if you want to get the characteristics of the both uh, uh, i mean both the type of uh, energy storage means they will prefer hybridized energy storage uh, normally you can say hybridizing the uh, uh, battery with the flywheel or battery with the capacitor so normally they won't go with normally they won't prefer uh, to hybridize the battery with the flywheel instead of that they will go with the battery with the super capacitors why means super capacitors having the high power density and battery having the high energy density so if you are combining these two you will get the higher power density as well as high energy density so uh, that's what uh, they are preferring the hybridizing the energy storage devices flywheel yeah if you are uh, that's a short term uh, energy storage so I'll, of course uh, you'll have the benefit not like uh, energy i'm uh, not like uh, high energy density uh, combined with the uh, high power density like uh, uh, battery with super capacitors thank you sir yeah sure welcome any system for uh, uh, for photovoltaic also they prefer the energy storage systems for standalone applications so they i mean the types of energy storage are same for uh, photovoltaic as well as wind energy conversion system sir uh, any I any other questions sir. i can oh, okay ma'am sure okay, no questions sir i think thank you very much sir for your uh... Valuable, uh, very informative session presented for the topic. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thanks for the invitation, too.